Greetings, this is Pastor Eugene Cowan II of the Jeremiah Missionary Baptist Church. And I want to welcome you to our virtual worship experience where we're transforming lives through the Word of God. Open up your heart, open up your mind, and open up your life to receive a relevant and real Word that will transform your life from the inside out. Come on and join us in our worship experience.
bless the Lord with our gifts. If the Lord has been blessing you, if the Lord has been sustaining you, if the Lord has been keeping you, if you still been getting checks in the mail, if you still been getting direct deposits, if the Lord is still blessing your life, if you still got a job to go to, if God is still keeping a roof over your head and providing for you. Listen, the Bible says, bring me all the tithes to the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. Prove me now with said the Lord of hosts. If I would not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, then you won't have room enough to receive. Beloved brothers and sisters, it's giving time. It's time to bring his tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. And listen, I want to share with you. Hey, we made it to the eighth month of the year. Again, I shared that this is the month of new beginnings. And I'm asking you. To give generously to the work of the Lord here at Jeremiah. Listen, I know we're not meeting together in worship, but let me tell you something. God is still in our midst. He's still making a way out of no way. He's still doing great things on our behalf. And beloved, listen, you cannot be God giving no matter how. How hard you try. So when you give, give cheerfully. Give like you know you're blessed. Give like you know you got favor on your life. Give like you know God is making a way for you. Listen, beloved. You can go to give a fly. That's G I V L I F Y. You'll see a picture of me and Lady Kyle in there. I'm asking that you can do the best that you can to support the church during this time. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the givers and the gifts. Thank you for those that gave out of the depths of their heart and from the depths of their soul for the upbuilding of the kingdom. God, we do not take it by happenstance or by chance, but God, we're grateful and thankful for everything that you do in our life. Father, you're still opening up doors. You're still making ways out of the way. You're still doing over and above that which we can imagine or even think. And for that, God, we shall thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Father, as we give, I pray that no one will lack. I pray, God, that you would do exceedingly and abundantly above that which they can imagine or even think according to your word. Do it now, God. And Father, as we already share, every blessing that we receive is not just monetary, it's not just material, but God, a peace of mind is a blessing. A good night rest is a blessing. A healthy body is a blessing. And for that, God, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. God bless you, man.
within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple for they are coming to kill you indeed. At night they will come to kill you. And I said, to such a man as I flee, and who is there such as I would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because of Tobiah and Samalot and Ahimea. For this reason he was hiding, that I should be afraid and act that way I sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. Verse number 14 says, My God, remember Tobiah and Samuelah, according to these their words, and the prophetess Nodiah, and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. The word of the Lord is already blessed. For a little while, I want to talk about I am on assignment. I am on assignment. Beloved brothers and sisters, let me share something with you. It's very important that you never forget that when God puts you or gives you an assignment, that you have to do it with all your heart. I preach that. That you have to make sure that you give your all to that which God has given your hands to do. Matter of fact, you have to work while it's day because night will come when no man can work. And sometimes you're going to deal with those who will try to stop you in the assignment that God has already destined you for. Beloved brothers and sisters, when you have an assignment, the job, and the truth is, is that you have to learn how to finish your assignment. And you have to overcome the distraction of the enemy, and you have to overcome the distraction of those who try to do harm and mean you no good. And sometimes those people should be friends, but they are also foes. Now the text lets us know that, that Nehemiah, he's on the wall and you got Sambalat, you got Tobiah, you got uh, Geshem, the Arab, they all come to him and tell him uh, that he needs to come and meet with them in the plain of Ono. And I love what Nehemiah does. Nehemiah, he's already Look at how far God has brought them in the building of the wall. The wall in chapter number five was halfway done. But when we get to chapter number six, the wall is fully complete. The only thing that has not been done is that the doors and the gates have not been hung. So in between chapter five and chapter six, there has been more progress. Let me share something with you. The enemy does not like to see you progress on the assignment that God has given you. And when you get to a point where you're almost finished, that's when the enemy is going to try to step in and get you off of your assignment. Beloved brothers and sisters, let me tell you, when you're on assignment by God, you got to stick to the task. You got to stay to the task and you got to understand that God has your, has your future and has your best interest in his mind and God has your back through it all. Look at the text. It's very interesting. It's very beautiful. They said, come down and meet with us in the plan of, in the plan of, oh no. And I love what Nehemiah says. Nehemiah says, oh no, I'm not going to oh no. In other words, really what he's trying to help them to see is you want us to meet together, but you have no agenda. You have no purpose. You have no destiny. What you want to meet with, with me about will stop the progress on the building of the wall. And let me share something, brothers and sisters. When God gives you an assignment, do not stop. Do not pause. 
but finish your assignment. Listen, I was in school, I'll never forget, I was in school and I was I was taking a course in college, I was in Cornerstone University and, and some things had come up uh, in my life. I had to take care of my sister, my mom, I had to drive to Detroit. I took some weeks off and I could not complete the course. And at the end of that course, I talked with my professor. He let me make up my work afterward. But when I looked at my uh, report, when I looked at my grade, I had an eye on my report card. And I called up to the school and I asked the, the uh, registrar, I said, it's an eye on my, my grade for this class. I got a problem with that. What is an eye? I've never had an eye before. I had A, B, C, D, E, yeah, but I've never had an I. And she says, well, if you look at the margin, it tells you that I means incomplete. Brothers and sisters, please do not let the assignment that God gives you have an incomplete audit. In other words, God wants you to complete your assignment. In other words, you got to finish the work. She called the professor. She let him know uh, that I had called. And he says, I'm updating the system now. I have his work. And when I update the grade, it will change and show his final grade. And it won't be an incomplete. Beloved, do not stand before God himself. And when you stand before him, you have have an incomplete on your assignment. You better come on up in here today. You got to make sure that you do all you can, while you can, while you have the strength, while you have the mind, while you have the courage, while you got some vitality in your life. Give God your all for the assignment that he's given to your life. Beloved brothers and sisters, I love this text. I love what is in this word. Nehemiah, Nehemiah helps us to understand that God, when he gives us an assignment, you don't have time to be distracted. Please write that down. Please write that down. You don't have time to be distracted. In other words, you don't have time for the foolishness of other people. You don't have time to do things that are not productive to you completing your assignment. You don't have time to waste. Can I share something with you, beloved brothers and sisters? You cannot get back time. Once time is gone, once time is wasted, you cannot Get that time back. Yes, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yes, I thank God for his word. He will redeem your time. But he will not give you that time back again. You can't go back in time and finish what you did not complete. Beloved brothers and sisters, you don't have time to be distracted. Look at there in verse number two. It says, there was some who said, uh, in verse number two, it, was, it says in verse number two, that Sambalot and Geshem said to me, come, let us meet together in the villages, in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them saying to them, I am doing a great work. So I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? While I leave it and come down with you. Listen, listen. I want to drop three phases on you. I want to drop three phases on you. And I hope this bless you. Please write this down right here. Uh, don't come down. If, if you have a mindset that says, don't come down. Don't come down comes from uh, the fact that when you look at yourself, this is you speaking to yourself, don't come down. See, sometimes when you feel like coming down, you know, I've been walking, I've been doing prayer every morning, 6.30, I try to get up, lay the collar, leave the house, and sometimes I don't want to go. I'm going to tell you the truth, I love prayer, I love praying, but sometimes I want to hold on to my pillow a little while longer. Hallelujah, I love you saints, I love praying with you, but I'm just like y'all, sometimes I want 
want to just hold into that bed a little while longer. And let me share something with you that sometimes I have to remember don't come down, don't lay down, don't stay down. What do you mean, Pastor Conway? When you got a mindset of don't come down, you got to change your mindset because that's what you got to speak to yourself. Don't come down, don't quit, don't give up, don't stop. You got to talk to yourself when you say, don't come down. Then, here's another thing you got to learn how to say, I won't come down. There's a difference. See, if I don't come down, that's saying something that's inside of me, speaking to me. But when I say, I won't come down, I'm involving my own will. I'm making up my mind that I got to continue to do what God is telling me to do, and I won't come down. I'm talking to somebody right now. You're in the middle of working it. You're in the middle of getting your credit straight. You're in the middle of getting your family together. You're in the middle of getting things in order in your house. And you got people that are trying to distract you. You got to tell them, I won't come down. And then you got to also say, I can't come down. What do you mean, Pastor Cowan? I gave you three degrees uh, of coming down. Don't come down is when I'm starting and I feel like I can give up and then I get to I won't come down. I won't come down is when I'm halfway there and it feels like I can stop but I make up my mind I'm going to the end and I can't come down is when you're almost at the finish line. You don't come too far to turn around now. I can hear me a mind saying, you know what? I come too far to turn around brothers and sisters. See, sometimes you're going to make sure that when you deal with the distractions that you don't have time for. It. It's some stuff in your life now that you just don't have time for. And then it's some things you got to realize. This, you're going to have people that's going to try to discourage you. But can I tell you something? You cannot afford to be discouraged. You're almost at your breakthrough. You're almost at the point where God is about to release you and get you over this assignment. And guess what? You cannot afford to be discovered. It may not look the way you thought it was going to look. It may not happen the way you thought it was going to happen. But when God gives you an assignment, the details are not up to you. It's up to God. And I'm telling you, in this text, they are trying to discourage you. Look at verse number four. There were also those who said, we have followed. As it was, it was in verse number four, it says, in the text, it says, why should I even come down with you? Verse number four, it says, but they sent me the message four times, and I answered them in the sight now. Watch this. Look at this. Please don't miss this in the text. He asked, they came asking, come down, meet with us. 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 No, 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 no. Meet with us, no. Be with us, no. Listen, you have to learn how to say no to some invitations. Preach power when I'm doing the best I can right now. There's some things in your life you got to learn how to say no to. And I love what Nehemiah does. Nehemiah, he answers them in the same manner every time. Listen, if they don't get the message by now, they won't get it. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but it's some folk that been calling you through COVID-19 and called you all year long. They were not hitting your line in. They were not giving you in. They were not trying to hook up with you in. You better learn how to tell them no, 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 no. In other words, I'm trying to keep my life together. I'm on assignment and I'm trying to get what God has told me to do finish and it's right now in this season. No. Tell them no. 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 Look at the text. Look at the text. You can't afford to be discouraged. Look at what they do. Look at verse 5. Then Sambalah, his servant, 
sent his servant to me as before the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, it is reported among the nations and Geshem says that you as the Jews plan to rebel. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. And you have also appointed prophets to them to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, there is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king. So come, therefore, and let us consult together. And in verse 8, he says, Then I sent to him, saying, No such thing as you say are being done, but you invented them in your heart. For they were all trying to make us afraid. Their hand will be weakened in the work and it will not be done. Beloved, I want you to see this. You cannot afford to be discouraged. They tried to tell Nehemiah, Nehemiah, you know what? You try, you're not trying to be a governor. You're trying to be the new king in Jerusalem. Matter of fact, this is what we heard. Can I tell you, don't worry about people when they talk about about you and what they say about you is not true. Listen, people are always going to talk when you're trying to be successful, when you're trying to do right, when you're trying to finish your assignment. They will talk about you. They're going to say everything about you. Matter of fact, the text says they made the stuff up about Nehemiah just to try to get him to come down so that the work would stop. Can I tell you, stop answering people who are saying stuff about you that you are not, that, that you know is not true. You gotta learn how to let that stuff roll off your back and let it go. You ain't got to ask everybody. You ain't got to talk to everybody. You got to stay on your assignment. Look at brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, this morning this is very important as we look towards the end of the year. God got an assignment on your life and you can't worry about what people say you can't worry about how people act you can't worry about what people do because you are on assignment I need you to shout in your house I'm on assignment look at your husband say I'm on assignment look at your children say I'm on assignment and when you on assignment you can't stop for nobody the work must go on Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nehemiah, he says, no. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at verse 9. For they all were trying to make us afraid. Listen, beloved. The only reason the enemy is trying to make you afraid is because he knows when you complete your assignment, it's not going to be for you but it's going to be for the glory of God. And can I tell you something? God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he's given you power, he's given you love, and he's given you a sound mind. Can I show you this in the text? In other words, when the enemy comes at you with their strategy, God will give you divine strategy to overcome the enemy's strategy. That's why you got to stay in tune with God when you own assignment. When you own assignment, you got to make sure that you stay connected with God. Listen, look, 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 look. Listen. The text says, the text says they tried to discourage you. And I love what Nehemiah does. Look at the text. Nehemiah, is, he says in verse number 8, then I sent to them saying, no such thing as you are saying are not being done, but you invented them in your own heart. Beloved, Beloved, come here, brothers and sisters. This is so important. Listen, you cannot change the heart of a person. Only God can. Only God can change hearts. And you pray for them, don't play with them. Come here one more time. You pray for them, don't play with them. In other words, you let God work on them while you're completing your assignment. Come here, look at the text. They were afraid. Now look, Nehemiah goes on and says, all they're trying to do is make us scared. 
their hands will be given the work and it will not be done. Now listen to what he prays. He says, now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Listen, I don't know who this is for. I know you on assignment, but I need to help you today and just say, God, give me strength. I need you to open up your mouth and open up from your head back and say, God, give me strength. In other words, you got to tell God, I need your strength. And you want to know how you get strength from God? Nehemiah in chapter 8, verse number 10, he'll tell you the joy of the Lord is my strength. Watch this, watch this. Come here, come here. Look, every step of the way, every step of the way, God gave me to my favor. Can I tell you, you can have joy in the midst of discouragement. You can have joy in the midst when people are trying to put you down and pull you down and take you off course. You ought to smile because that means you are doing something right and you are on assignment. But look at brothers and sisters, when God gives you an assignment, you stick to it in spite of the naysayers, in spite of the people that try to slap you in the back. You stick to your assignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The text goes on to teach us. Uh, when you see this, it says verse number 30. Verse number, as it was verse number 10. Afterward, I came to the house of Shimon, the son of Eliah, the son of Bethbel, who was a secret informer. Hold on. He was a secret informer. In other words, we say it in the hood, he was a snitch. Uh, in other words, in other words, he was telling the enemy what was going on behind the wall. Now watch this in the text. He also was a prophet. The text says, the text says that he tells Nehemiah, look at verse 10, it says, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple for they're coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, should such a man as I flee and who is there such as I that I will go to the temple and save his life, I will not go in. Therefore, I perceive that God hath not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because of Tobiah, Sephalot, had hired him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He was a spy. He was inside the camp. He's prophesying to Nehemiah. And Nehemiah tells him, no, when I go run and hide in the church, when I go run and hide in the temple, when my people that I come to help are out there and they will fight a battle without me, can I share something with you, beloved brothers and sisters? Please come here, please come here, please come here. This is not time to go run and hide, but this is time now that you stand up. I'm talking to somebody today. Nehemiah gives us a practical principle. When you are dealing with distraction, when you are on assignment, you got to learn how to have discernment. Huh? Write that down. Discernment. You don't have time to be distracted. You can't afford to be discouraged as you're going to have to have discernment. Listen, you got to watch out for the folk that's close to you, the folk that's in your path, the folk that's around you. You got to learn how to discern what God is saying through their lips. Uh, Nehemiah, I love what he says. He says, hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. No, I don't care who's coming. If they're coming for me, we got to fight. It's going to happen. I'm not going to run and hide. And can I suggest to you, brothers and sisters, that sometimes, sometimes in your life, you got to take a stand and you got to discern your situation. Nehemiah discerned the situation and he understood that this man was a higher liar, a higher prophet, a higher person that was there to discourage him and he discerned it. That's what I know about serving God. God will give you discernment and I'm here to help somebody today when you are on assignment. 
You have to discern not only the situation, but you got to discern the people. You got to discern your people that are in your camp, that are on your team, the people that are around you, the people that are in position. I know you got to recognize this. Come here, come here, come here. God did not give them the assignment. He gave you the assignment. He gave you the assignment. God sends the right people to help you with your assignment. The enemy sends discouragers to stop you in your assignment. Please do not treat who God sends like the enemy. Come here. Nehemiah. He says in the text, look at verse 13. For this reason he was hiding, that I should be afraid and act that way and sin. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, please don't miss the text. Nehemiah says, if I was going to act that way, it would have been sin. Because if I stop in my assignment that God has given me, then that would be sin. In other words, Nehemiah understood two things that were very important in his life. He remembered that God gave him the assignment and he remembered that the assignment that was given to him by God had to be completed. And he understood that he could not stop. Let me pause the station identification right here. Can I ask you this question? What's stopping you? What's stopping you from fulfilling your destiny? What's stopping you from fulfilling your assignment? What's stopping you from going back to get your degree? What's stopping you from starting your business? What's stopping you from getting your marriage together? What's stopping you from getting your children in order? What's stopping you from saving your money and move from renting to buy your own place? What's stopping you from getting your credit straight? What's stopping you from having a healthy relationship with people? What's stopping you? from getting your house in order. It's your assignment. It's your assignment. Your assignment. Your assignment. He discerned the assignment. He says, verse number 14, my God remember Tobiah and Sambalah according to their works and the prophetess Nodiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. In other words, Nehemiah understood that he was afraid. That fear would spread throughout the whole city. Can I tell you that you can spread one or two things? You can either spread fear or you can spread faith. Beloved, Nehemiah came to a wall that was torn down. That was destroyed. The gates were burned. We all read, we've all seen it. But Nehemiah, when he made the declaration, this is what God has said. God has told me, let us rebuild the wall so that we will not be a, a disgrace to our God. And the people said yes, and they started building the wall. And now that the wall is almost completed, discouragement after discouragement, time after time. But Nehemiah does not give up on his assignment. Beloved brothers and sisters, you're going to have to. Discern when the enemy comes. And don't give up on your, 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 your assignment. Don't give up on your assignment. Look at verse number 15. I want you to see this. It's very important. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elu in the 52 days. Wait a minute. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elu in 52 days. And it happened when all our enemies heard of it. 
And all the thing, all the nations around us saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and letters and letters to Tobiah came to them. For many in Judah were pledged to him because he was a son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Arah, and his son of Jonathan had married the daughter of Meshlu, the son of Barak, and also they reported his good deeds before me and reported my words to him. But Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. Beloved, can I tell you something? If you look at that text, it says that after the wall was done, I want you to see this. When all our enemies heard it, and all the nations around saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes. For they perceived that the work was done by our God. Can I suggest to you as I get ready to leave you, Remember that God has you on assignment. That God has a big assignment for your life. That you don't have time to be distracted. You can't afford to be discouraged. And you're going to have to discern what God is doing. But can I suggest one last thing? That God is bigger than your assignment. As the enemies all around them saw the walls going up. In 52 days, the assignment was completed. And listen to what they said. They said, not that the people have did it, but look what God has done. Look how God did it. And they gave God the credit for the work. Can I suggest that God is bigger than your assignment? That whatever God gives you to do, remember God is going to get the glory out of it. I don't care what it is that God lays on your heart, whatever God prompts you to do, you got to remember that God will get the glory out of all that he lays on your heart to do. But you got to remember, complete your assignment. Complete your assignment. Beloved brothers and sisters, listen, uh, they, they, they're getting ready to start football, and y'all know y'all pastor loves football. Uh, you got offense and defense, and, and offense and defense, and uh, each player, when they're playing their position, has an assignment. Please, please. Each position has an assignment. If you're on the offensive line, you got to block the defensive line. If you're on the defensive line, your goal is to get to the quarterback. The quarterback's assignment is to throw the ball or to have the ball off. The running back's assignment is to run with the ball. The wide receiver's assignment is to catch the ball. The tight end assignment is to catch the ball and block. And the halfback's assignment is to run with the ball or block for the running back. And then the defense assignment, the defense assignment, it goes like this. The quarterback is to make sure that the wide receiver don't catch the ball. The safety is if they catch the ball, you don't let them get past you. The linebacker's job is to get the running back. Everybody has an assignment. But watch this. When you got an assignment, you also have other assignments that complement your assignment. There's others around you that will make sure if you do your job, I do my job. The goal is that the assignment will be complete. When you got an assignment, you got to get to the end of that assignment and you can say, my assignment is done. My assignment is finished. You know Jesus was on assignment, don't you? He was on assignment when he came to earth. He came 40 and two generations. He was born to Mary in Bethlehem with Joseph. The heavens opened up. Spoke to the shepherds. They said, peace on earth, goodwill to all men. They came 
to see the little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. And from the day he took his first breath, he was on the assignment. He was on the assignment when he went into the temple at 12 years old. He was on assignment at 33 when he started his public ministry. He was on assignment when he touched blind eyes, especially the man that was born blind. And they asked him a question. Who sin was it this man? Mother was this man? Father was it this man? He says, no, this man was blind for an assignment so that I can open up his eyes and you may know that God has power on earth. He was on assignment when he fed 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves. He was on assignment when he was on the ship. And the winds and waves was beating the ship. And he said, peace be still. He was on assignment. He was on assignment when he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. It said, Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. If it be your will, let this cup pass. But if not, he was on assignment when he went from judgment hall to judgment hall. He was on assignment when they put nails in his hand, nails in his feet, crown of thorns on his brow. He was on assignment when he hung on the cross for your sins and for my sins. He was on assignment. He was on assignment to his very last breath when he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he said, it is finished. He spoke out in the earth realm. He spoke out into the heavens and said, it is finished. In other words, Jesus was saying, God, my assignment is finished and it's in your hands. In the early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power on heaven and on earth. He said, it's in my hands. Can I tell you something? When you finish your assignment, not only does God get the glory, God moves you from glory to glory. God gives you a new assignment. Once you finish one assignment, he gives you another assignment. Jesus said, I must go away now. He told his disciples, the same way you see me leaving on the cloud, I'll come back one day. Now he sits at the right hand of the Father intercessing for you and me. He has a new assignment. And when we plead the blood of Jesus, when we call on his holy name, he gives us the strength that we need to fulfill our assignment. Let the weak say I'm strong. Fulfill your assignment. If you're broken and hurting, say, I'm healed. And fulfill your assignment. If you feel discouraged, do like David. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And fulfill your assignment. Beloved brothers and sisters, in this season, in this moment, God is calling you to fulfill your assignment. Do not be caught with your work under. I used to hear the old saint saying, don't let my living be in vain. When we stand before God, I used to hear the deacons praying on first Sunday. And one of the deacons would say, when I get to heaven, I want to hear him say, servant, well done. Thy good and faithful servant, well done. Beloved, work while it is yet done. Work out your own soul salvation.
finish your assignment. Do it for me one more time. Throw your head back and holler, I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now. We thank you for the assignment that you've given us in our life. We thank you, oh God, for the marching orders that you've laid on our heart. And we thank you right now, God. Let us finish, let us complete the work that you've given us to do. And God will give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. We'll bless you. We'll work until it's finished. We won't be discouraged. We won't be distracted. We'll discern. We'll discern. We'll use wisdom. We'll walk in your favor until the work is done. Father, somebody needs you right now. Somebody may be listening that's not saved. Touch their heart. Prick them right now. Let them know that you brought them into this world to give them an assignment. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody is not saved. Your word teaches us. Hallelujah. Your word teaches us. And if we confess with our mouth and believe with our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we shall be saved. Touch somebody's heart right now, God. Bless somebody's life right now. In the name of Jesus. This is your servant's prayer. Hallelujah and amen. Jeremiah family, I pray something's been said. To encourage you along this week. I pray that something's been said. To motivate you, to encourage you, to run on to see what the end is going to be, and to finish your assignment. You have an assignment. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't give up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and God bless you. Listen, I love you with the love of the Lord. Better to have Jesus and not need him than to need Jesus and not have him. You'll be blessed. I want to thank you for joining us in worship. You can connect with me, Pastor Eugene Cowan II, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And connect with our church family on www.jeremiahmbc.com. I would love to see you in person. Join us for worship, 4519 West Villard, Jeremiah Missionary Baptist Church. And remember, it's better to have Jesus and not need him than to need him and not have him.